There is one strong indicator in Acts 2 as to the meaning of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter states that the respondents to his sermon would receive the gift because, as verse 39 says, the promise is for you. We know then that the gift of the Holy Spirit is a matter of an existing Bible promise. That means that somewhere in the Bible's text, prior to Acts 2, God promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who obeyed the gospel. This series has already considered that connection. In episodes 130 and 131, we established that the only promise of the Old Testament used to explain the work of the Holy Spirit in the church is in Joel 2. It is the only Old Testament passage directly quoted and applied to the church. And Acts 2 is the last time any Bible prophet ever referred to the Old Testament to explain the Holy Spirit's work. Joel 2 is the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. There is one point that needs to be reemphasized in this context. Those who believe the gift of the Spirit is a non-prophetic blessing are caught in a bind regarding finding a promise of it before Acts 2. As discussed earlier, Peter does not explain the nature of the gift. The most reasonable conclusion is that he expected his audience to understand the effect of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit. What Acts 2.39 necessitates is that understanding of the gift comes from a pre-existing statement about the work of the Holy Spirit. Peter's argument demands that a non-prophetic experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit would have to have been known before Acts 2.38. If this non-prophetic indwelling existed among the Jews prior to Acts 2, how then could it be used as the identifying seal of the true people of God as Christians after Acts 2? Many proponents of an ordinary or non-prophetic indwelling claim that the indwelling produces no visible or demonstrable effects. But if it is true that the gift or the, um, the effect of the indwelling of the gift of the Holy Spirit is only internal, then it cannot be evidentiary. See, that is especially true if the Old Testament Jews also had this same indwelling. As the Judaistic teaching began to impact the church, how could the gift of the Spirit be used to identify the people of God? Both the true apostolic doctrine and the Judaistic counterfeit could simply claim to have experienced this non-demonstrable indwelling. If the pre-Acts 2 Jews had experienced and understood the Spirit's non-prophetic indwelling to the, to the degree that it did not be, need to be explained by Peter, would they not simply claim the continued possession of this indwelling after Acts 2? If they could successfully make that claim, they would have nullified the Apostles' appeal to the seal of the Spirit among the early Christians. Acts 2.39 statement, that the gift is a fulfillment of a promise of God demands that the gift of the Holy Spirit be of Old Testament origin. If the gift is of a non-prophetic nature, its inclusion in the Old Testament ruins the ability or its ability to be used as evidence of a true Christian. Yet, if it is of a prophetic nature, the fact that the gift is demonstrable means its ability to be used as evidence continues. If after Acts 2.38 and 39, there are no Jewish prophets to counter the Christian prophets, the evidentiary impact of the gift would still have efficacy. The fact that the gift is part of Old Testament prophecy means that it must be prophetic.